Are you sick of seeing the same boring old layout that you see all over the internet and also on template sites? In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can build this site using Webflow so that you can take your own custom designs and create them into unique layouts so they can stand out from the crowd. We're gonna start by dissecting this website using Figma so we can actually understand how it's built and then we're gonna take our learnings into Webflow and build this website in real time. Let's get to it. So first thing you need to understand here is Symbol is a website or basically an e-commerce that sells furniture for your record players and vinyl music. So we're gonna take this into Figma and I'm gonna show you guys how we can actually dissect this hero to understand how it is that they built this using this custom unique layout. So it's very easy to do. All you need to do is create a rectangle here with a simple six pixel stroke or any, any type of stroke that, that you prefer. And we're gonna use a simple copy paste function so that we can then create a new rectangle. So we're gonna start by blocking off the most important elements. So for example, here I'm gonna start by blocking off the image on the right side. I'm gonna use the copy paste function as well. I'm gonna use the copy paste function again and use it to block off this text here. I'm gonna use it again to block off this text on the bottom here, maybe move it a bit down. And lastly, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that again for the text in the middle here and move this back up. So now we can see the basics of this layout. There's That's pretty much that there is to it, apart from the big logo in the middle, and we can get into that later. And we can actually even go ahead and separate it using another rectangle. But this is pretty much the basic of this layout. We have a large image on the right. We have a large logo on the top. We have text on the bottom, text in here. We have two different types of text. One's a link, one's a text block. And then we have another text on the left side here. So how do we actually take what we've learned here and put it into a real website? How do we create this for ourselves? Well, we're gonna use the power of grids and div blocks to create this custom unique layout. So let's get started. So I have a completely blank Webflow project here, apart from the background and the color just for, just for speed. But we're gonna start by creating a very simple wrapper. We can call this wrapper. And this is just a blank div that we'll use later. And then we're gonna begin our project using these grids. So we can create zero, zero in terms of columns and rows. We don't really need any spacing. And within this grid, we can then start to populate it with individual div blocks. So we can create one div block and just copy paste. And then with this last div block, we're gonna go ahead and stretch it the entirety of the grid. So now we have one, two, and three div blocks. And we can also see that within the navigator, we have one, two, and three div blocks inside of a grid, which is inside of another div that we just decided to call it the wrapper. So I'm gonna rename these to maybe left. This one can be right. This one can be bottom. So now we have the basics of our layout. We have whatever text we want to add to the left side. We have whatever we want to put on the right side and then we whatever we want to put on the bottom here. So we can just begin to understand how this layout is being built just by using this block method. And this can be used for any type of design that you that you want to understand how they built it. Use this and let me know how it goes. So we have one, two and three div blocks here and we can start here by just adding a simple image. We can go ahead and choose the image from the website here. And then within the left side, we need to start adding this text. But if we just decided to add text blocks, just, just like this, then you see what would happen. It would just start to add on top of each other and we wouldn't be able to control where it's being placed. So what we need to do is add a grid inside of this div block. We don't need any extra rows and we don't need any columns for now so that we can go ahead and start populating it with some text. So here I'm just gonna add a text block. And on the other side of the grid, we also need to add a separate div because if we can see here, we have this block here, which has two pieces of text. We have a text block here and then also a link. So if we wanted to be extra particular about this, I'm just gonna go ahead and do another copy paste so we can see how we need to build this. So we have text and then text link. So I'm gonna go into the X-ray mode in Webflow, which we can achieve by using Shift, Command, and X. So we can start to see a little bit more about what's happening behind the scenes. I'm gonna click on the grid, so make sure that we are on the grid and we can rename this to left grid. Okay, so then once we're in the grid, we can go ahead and add a div block. So this div block is now 
the container, which will hold the two pieces of text. So now we can just go ahead and add a text block and then a link. So a text link, we can rename this to shop now so that we understand what it's doing. Okay, but now we see the very obvious problem, which is that the text is on the top side of the div rather than the bottom. So to get it on the bottom side, all we need to do is convert it into a flex and justify it to the bottom. So now we see that there's text on the bottom left and right, and then we have the image on the right, but there's the text missing on the bottom. So to get this text here, I'm just gonna add a simple text block. And now we have the basic elements of what we need. The only thing that we are missing right now is gonna be the big logo in the middle, which we can cover last. So for now, this is what we have. This is all we need to create this very simple layout. So let's get to it. Let's start actually understanding what we need to do to make sure that all of these elements properly scale with all the different breakpoints, whether it's on the larger desktop or even on mobile. We can see that right now it doesn't really scale too well. So let's get started with that. Before going ahead and scaling, we're gonna need to take the real text that we have here and just place it inside of the Webflow project just to get some real data, just to get some real text going. You can go ahead and just copy paste, copy paste, and copy paste. So this is a great way to learn how you can actually create these difficult layouts, but obviously don't do this for your own websites. So now we have the text here. We've got text on the left, text on the right, and text on the bottom. And what we need to do is understand how we can create this text to scale up and down. So we're gonna use a method of scaling called viewport width and height. For this text, it's important to understand what the sizes actually are. So we're gonna use a, an extension on Chrome called what font, and we can go ahead and click it and it'll tell us what size it is. So this one's 15 pixels, this one is 34, this one's 34 again, and then 15 again, but it's bold. Okay, great. So we can now go into Webflow and we can start understanding what size these fonts need to be. So we can start by creating this font to be one viewport width. And we can talk about why it's one viewport width in a moment. And this one can be two viewport width. And so can this one. But the only thing that we're missing here to make this actually scalable is gonna to be to make this a scalable unit. So we'll just call it one and then dash. And this will allow it to properly scale within all the different breakpoints. Okay, so now that we have this, if you will focus on the size of the actual text as we scale up and down. So this is a 1920 resolution versus a 1432. And we can see the text is scaling up and down as it would. But then as we get into the smaller breakpoints, that is when we get issues. So to go ahead and make this scalable for the lower breakpoints, we need to convert this to REMs. Same thing here. Same thing for the bold text here, we're just gonna convert into REMs. Two REMs and then two REMs. Okay, so now we have text that properly scales up and down as we go into the breakpoints, but now we need to obviously style it so that it doesn't, it doesn't look like this and it looks a little bit better. So we can go ahead and make this into a bold this is already bold, and then this one here can be bold as well. Okay, but there's obviously a very big part of this design missing, which is gonna be the big logo in the middle. So one way that we can fix that is we can go ahead and click on the body. We can use Command K for a shortcut, and we can type in image. And when we get this panel here, we can choose the symbol SVG. Now the reason why I picked an SVG above any other image size is so that it can scale up and down and it won't pixelate at any resolution, which is fantastic. So once we have the image ready here, we're gonna type in 100 viewport width because we want it to be able to scale as we reduce and increase our screen size. As we can see here, it reduces and increases responsively. So that is fantastic. So now if we go ahead and reduce and increase, we can see that the symbol logo keeps going up and down, but we see that there's obviously an issue here, which is that it's on top of everything rather than above it, if that makes any sense. So we can go ahead and click into above. So what this will do is it will move the logo layer all the way up and it'll disregard anything related to the wrapper elements or the wrapper layers. Okay, 
So I'm gonna go back into my X-ray mode here and we're gonna start to create the proper padding, the proper margin for this hero size here. So in order to create the spacing here, we need to go ahead into the div here, into the bottom div, and we will just use two REM for the top margin, and we will use one REM for the bottom here so that we can create this little spacing here and then this larger spacing right here. So we can start to understand what this website is built with. And then on the bottom here, we can create 0.5 REM. So we do create this little separation here. And it looks like there's a little bit more spacing that we need to add. So maybe something like that. At the end of the day, this is just to understand how we're building this, not to really get to the exact pixel perfect design, but we can get 90% of the way there. So we're getting pretty close here, but there's something very obvious here, which is that the spacing is cutting it a bit close here to the, to the edge, even on, on all the different breakpoints. So we need to do something about that. So we can go into our wrapper div here and then add a 1%. So we can add a 1% padding to the left side here. And we can see that now that's moved everything 1% to the left as well as in the larger breakpoints. But then the padding for the tablet needs to be a little bit different because if we can see, and if we scroll all the way down, we can see that something very different is happening here. So the image is now moved up. The text has moved around 300 pixels to the bottom, it seems. It's very far down, it's still split in two, but then the shop now button is above the text rather than neck or rather than under this side text here. So we can do something about that as well. So we can do this by a few different ways. We're gonna create a copy of this link. So we, now we have two shop now buttons or links. And once we're in padding, we're going to rename it. And we're going to rename it to link two. So this link is gonna be great for our mobile breakpoints, but not necessarily for the larger ones. So it's gonna stay in this layout for the desktop ones, but it's gonna change for the mobile ones. So once we're in tablet, we're gonna go ahead and make this into just visible so that we can see it when it is in mobile, but then for desktop, we can go ahead and hide it. And now we can do the exact opposite here. We can hide it on tablet, but then we can show it on our desktop breakpoint. And now if we go into the mobile and the desktop, we can see that in, in real time, nothing's affected, but we know that there's two different layers here. There's two different links so that we can go ahead and play around with that. So we can see that there's link one and link two, but link one is obviously hidden for the mobile. Okay, so now that we have the link on the bottom here, we can go back into our x-ray vision and just drag this into the correct div. So we can make sure that it's in the bottom div. And now for link number two, we can give it a padding of two REM or whatever it is that we need to give here. So maybe maybe even three or four or something like that. One interesting thing to consider here is that we haven't yet done the responsiveness for the top of the hero. So let's go ahead and get into that. So there's a very easy way of doing that. Once we're in the grid, and the reason why we started with the grid is so that we can easily manipulate it once we go into the lower breakpoints. So we can start by just removing one of these rows So we can start by clicking on the div and making sure that we're affecting all of the correct elements. We're gonna hide the symbol just for now, just so we can see what we're doing here. And I'm gonna drag it all the way here. For the right side, we're gonna drag it all the way as well. And we're gonna make this into a manual so we can move it all the way up. So now we have the top and the bottom. And if we check on the desktop, it's still relatively all set, but in the mobile, we can see that it's top and bottom design. Okay, we can then turn our image back on so we can see it at all times. And if we move into the tablet, we can see that there is a little bit of, of margin going on here, a little bit of padding. So let's go ahead and fix this up. So once we're in tablet, we can go ahead and maybe add something like 10% just something minimal so that it does move up and down with, with our screen, but it does still stay responsive. For the wrapper, we can remove this 1% padding that's only necessary in desktop, and then we can give this some more, some more padding and margin here. They can go with like five REM because that is quite far down. We can probably even go with 10 REM. And then we can do the same here with the bottom. We can go with 10 REM. 
or 20. Let's go with 10 probably. Okay, and then this text block looks like it's reducing in size as we go down, okay. So lastly, we just need to change this text block here to go maybe back to one REM, remove the bold, and it should look something similar to this. Okay, one thing that I am noticing here is that we do need a little bit of padding, obviously for the text here. So very easy to do as well. All we need to do is go into our div, make sure that we're in the correct one, for the right one, the bottom one. Good. There we go. So we need to make sure that we're in the correct div here. I'm going to select the left grid here. So we need to make sure that we're in the correct div here. I'm going to add some 1% padding to both sides, 1% and 1%. And I'm just going to replicate that on the bottom padding. So 1% percent and we can see that this is now pretty well responsive this and we can see that this website is now responsive to the initial design and also the design that we have here we can see that it scales appropriately and the only thing that we need to fix now is going to be how we can make the image here move behind the text move behind the left side of the page and also on the top side. We need to be able to responsively scale that up and down. So to do that, all we need to do is go into the right div and create this into overflow none. And then on our width here, we can create 50 viewport width. So we make sure that it's 50%. And here I'm noticing that it is pushing a little bit on the right side. So we can maybe add a little bit of padding here, one REM. And now when we go into the different sizes, we see that we're only taking up whatever constraint we added to. So for the mobile version, we need to do the opposite. Instead of 50 viewport width, we go ahead and do 100 viewport width and then 50 viewport height. Okay. And then with the image, we need to make sure that we're always relatively in the middle. And then so that we can actually scale the image to always have the person in the center of the image, we need to go ahead into the fill and click onto cover or contain. So to make sure that our main image here is responsive in all the sizes, including mobile and the symbol logo doesn't actually just cover the entire image, we need to make sure that it is properly kept right. So we're going to go ahead into height here and make this into the horizontal landscape. And we're going to make this into something like 70 viewport height. Okay, and we're gonna do the same down here. So as you've created the parent div of the image to be 50 view height, we can see that as we scroll down or as we go into the lower breakpoints, the image still contains half of the viewport height. And our design is finally responsive for all the different breakpoints. And we can see that even in the higher breakpoints or the, or the larger breakpoints, we can see that the symbol, the image, the text is always scaling appropriately with the dimensions of the screen. So if we go ahead and preview this and compare it to our our website here, we can see that apart from the nav block that we're missing, we can see that it is very close to our intended design. So if you wanted to compare to the real size to see how we did, we can go ahead and view the preview here. And we can compare it to the real site. So apart from some of the color discoloration that we couldn't get right here, this design is pretty spot on. And we can say that we successfully have designed this site in Webflow and we've essentially repeated the same layout that Symbol Audio has created here. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and we'll see you on the next one.